Hello humans and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. That's right, the video game show that is not hosted by an annoying e-beggar. There is no Patreon, no Super Chats. That's right, we just talk about the games we love and how fun it is to hoard them. I mean, uh, collect them. Now, with that said, let's get ready for the show. On today's episode... This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello humans and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Can the Amico be saved? <laughs> you know guys, after my last video, which I made sort of off the cuff, you know, because at that point I was feeling very disappointed on what had just happened, which was, you know, the, the Amico being delivered with uh, software that wasn't updated and it was laggy software. You know, I didn't... I, at that point, I was really just venting, you know, my disappointment for what had happened because, you know, I, I really want the console to be successful. You know, if you give me a choice whether it bombed or it be su successful, I would want it to be successful. I don't really like the way they're going about doing things, uh, you know, in general. I think there's a lot of missed potential for the console. You know, I was very, jeez, uh, how would I say, I was very amazed by the types of comments that I got. So I wanted to address some of those really quick. The first one was, why are you buying the system if you have these criticisms of it? You know, and it's sort of like people were picking what they, what they agreed with and what they didn't agree with. And I said, well, for me, it's a win-win, right? If the console is, is successful, I'll have another console to play. If it doesn't, I'll have one of the most collectible consoles in history because it's going to be a complete shit show. And if they don't fix things, that's exactly what it's going to be. You know, when you have that many detractors, when you have that many people accusing you of all these different things and pointing every single little negative thing out, you have to take a different route. You know, you can shut their pie hole. You can shut every single detractor's pie hole by producing a great console with zero quality issues. Forget about whether they like the games or not. That's not the point. Does it work, right? Are you producing a quality product? If they don't like the games, they don't have to buy it. It's just that simple, right? And you would shut them up quick because a lot of these detractors, especially the bigger ones, right? Where they say, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, spend this money on this console because X, Y, or Z. They're concerned for you, right? They're concerned about your money while they're e-begging. <laughs> you know what, guys? Uh, e-begging to me is just a step away from welfare. I have no respect for grown men that can work, right, and want their viewers to pay their bills. I have zero respect for them. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. I don't approve of e-begging, and there's e-begging on both sides. There's e-beggars on the Amico side, and there's e-beggars on the on the tractor side. So, you know, for a lot of, you know, when it comes to that, I really don't really take their opinion seriously either way. I just don't. Um, but that's on the tractor side. But do they raise good points? The fact is that they do. They do raise some good points, not all of them, but some good points when it comes to the Amico. Some of the games look like they're, you know, you can buy them a cell phone. They look like, uh, you know, free games that you can download off the internet, yada, yada, yada. Those are valid, valid criticisms, right? As an Amico fan, uh, if you're one of them, you have to take those and say, yes, there's some of those. Not that you have to, but you can say, yeah, there's some of those, but there's this. This you can find on the phone. We don't have enough of that on the other side. And talking about the other side, what do we have on the other side? We have middle-aged men, like myself, and this is what I call, <laughs> we have e-beggars and now we have professional ball washers. You know, <laughs> when it comes to Tommy, they go in there and they're, they're at the golf course just ball washing. You know, oh, these are so pretty, so beautiful. Oh, look, man. guys, you have to be more critical, man. This was a screw up. This is a real screw up and nobody's calling it out. Oh, there's no problem. My friend saw it working. My friend saw it working and that's what's going to make it good. Regardless, <laughs> regardless of your opinion, 
that nobody gives a shit about because you're not big enough. I'm not big enough. This needs to get to market in front of millions of people in order to be successful. Why Tommy is on those channels, the only real thing he's doing is feeding the trolls. That's all he's doing. You know, you would think at this stage of the game, he would have better things to do, like concentrating on a launch game that would kick ass, right? And that's where I want to give my constructive criticism of the things that the Amico could do right to turn the ship around if they want to, right? And I made a few notes here. Now, guys, um, when it comes to the quality issue and the lag and things like that, when it comes to the manufacturing process, it's very easy. You can do a 5Y process, right? And it's just the 5 Ys. So you ask the 5 Ys. Why did the customer receive the, the product in that condition? Why wasn't it checked? Why, 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 right? And then you get to the root cause. Once you find the root cause, then you can do a corrective action to prevent that from happening. That shouldn't have happened. This close to launch, those things should be fixed. And if Tommy is the head of production, and I don't know who is, but whoever's in charge of production and quality should get together, hammer these things out, rather than be on, you know, channels that are really not going to make any difference to the success of the uh, video game system. And I'm not trying to offend anybody that he's been on, you know, because unless it's a bigger channel where he's selling to the masses, it really isn't, pro it's not a productive, pr productive use of his time, basically, right? And I, again, it's not to insult any channel where he's been on or anything like that, but there his time could be better used, you know, <laughs> in a lot of ways, right? And um, like I said, the name of the game is the game. He needs to, instead of talking about all these franchises, IPs that nobody cares about, and, and let's just be real here, guys. There's a bunch of games that, no, I'm sorry. They're just not what the retro community is looking for. And if you're going to those type of channels where you, you're talking to guys my age and older or around my age we don't care about <laughs> some of these games that you're putting out man we just we just don't you know and there's so much potential that's the problem there's so much potential there right and it's instead of you know having the you know biplanes or you know whatever uh, cornhole what if right with that great controller that you have you gave us an RPG a retro RPG that would use that controller, right? And you can have an on-screen menu for items. Man, that would be amazing. What if you would give us Time Pilot, for example? Time Pilot is a classic, and you develop that, you know, not in cartoon graphics, please, in 16-bit, like your customers are asking for. You know, people would write you some checks, right? And those are just two examples. Now, one of the issues that people were saying, well, you know, the Intellivision Amico is going to have problems because it's a brand new console. You remember the Xbox 360? It happened to Xbox, right? Why couldn't it happen to Amico? It's a big difference. Uh, Microsoft is made of money. They can burn money for years and they could give a shit, you know, until they get it right. And that's basically what they've done. The Intellivision Amico doesn't have that luxury, they have a limited amount of funds. So every step that they take has to be done, like we say in manufacturing, we're, we're gonna measure twice and cut once. You know, you can't have these missteps, right? So I just wanted to address that real quick, you know, that, that you really had to address those production problems right away. Um, and the console itself is not playing to its strengths. What are the strengths of the Amico? Right? I want to finish with this really quick because I don't want to make this video too long. What are the strengths of the Amico? It really is that controller. As, as, as many of the tractors shit on it, this is actually one of the best features of the system. And I'm, let me tell you why. Because this could be used in many different ways. And not only the controller, but the fact that you can use a phone. Right? There's one one missing part of that controller would be the camera because that controller could be used 
like it was used on the Wii U, for example, where you had these games where it would use the camera, but to save the day, here comes your phone. What if you produced a game where you were taking pictures, you know, around a virtual environment with your phone, like many of the, the more collectible Wii U games did, right? I'll give you an example with uh, Zombie Wii U. Um, yeah, Wii U Zombie, whatever it's called. Anyway, I was playing that game, and, you know, the, using the controller as the camera to look around just gave a whole different dimension to the game. It was just more interactive, you know? And from there, you can take many ideas to use that controller in some very, very creative ways. But you can't do it for nine bucks. You can't do it for $7.99. You have to separate those games for that market from the other market, right? You should make, I'm not saying that you should, but I would feel more comfortable if there was a market for those seven to ten ninety nine games for for kids and you know whatever you want to make that's fine in a separate entity, but have no price um, uh, limitations on your physical media because you can let the market determine what the price is. If you have a game that uses your controller in an innovative way and it's a system seller. Why are you going to limit them to 20 bucks to 29 bucks? Let them charge whatever they want to charge. If you sell me a game that I want of a franchise that I can't buy anymore, you know, like I've said before, the checks we would write, right? And those are some of the things that I can see that the Amico can do moving forward that would make them successful. However, and I have to say this with a very, very heavy heart. I don't think they will. I think that they've, when I say they've, I, you know, I really just mean Tommy. He's put his, his foot on the ground and he's going to die on this hill, right? That's the impression that I get. Unless there's a different game that comes out for the system that shows them the way that really is going to be a system seller, he's going to die on the hill that he's chosen and it's those games. So I don't know how we're going to get out of here. If I was a betting man, and I am, I'm thinking he's, he's going to go the way he's going to go, and he's going to die on that hill, and we're just going to have to live with whatever those consequences are. I do wish them the best. But at this moment, if they don't turn this around, and I mean soon, it's not looking good, guys, because you don't want a console that is going to have issues where the customer is going to return them back to the store because I tell you one thing, if there's one thing that that uh, retailers are sour to is product returns. Because they could have a profit margin of $100 per console. But the moment, a single moment, those consoles start returning in mass, those $100 will not cover their cost and expenses to process all those refunds and all those returns. And at that moment, the console will fail. All right, humans, that was just a quick update on the Amico. I hate to sound so somber, but, you know, I just didn't see enough as far as response from Intellivision to make me think any different, and I hope this clarifies a lot of the questions you guys had out there. If you want to keep on talking about it, uh, you know, whenever I'm not working, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing. I will catch you on the next one. Take care. New videos every Monday and Sunday. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Gen X Gamer. Remember to like and subscribe, click that notification bell, and remember, never ever be afraid to be happy. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.